it's Marcus here. This video is about how I study for tests to get the top grade and giving you the guidance and insights so that you can do the same. I made this video because I often observe people studying in ways that could be far more efficient and far more effective and they're getting far fewer results than they should be getting since they don't have the proper techniques of study. I also think that it's extremely important for someone to have a specific structure and outline that they use before studying for each test so that they can use a structure that is tried and tested and really works for them so that when they come to do the test that they are really confident and have 100% assurance that the way they studied was the most effective and the best way they could use to get those top grades. I also feel that using the same structure will help you be confident that there are no gaps in your knowledge because if you use different structures every time and different ways of studying every time then you won't know if a new one is better or worse than the last one that you used and that's why homogeneity is so important to give you confidence that you will do well in that test. For that reason I came up with my main structure of how I study for tests which is divided into four parts understand, memorize, practice and reflect. This gives the acronym UMPR. So the first section is understand. And my main philosophy behind the understand section is that I can't remember things that I don't understand in the first place. And so really coming to grips with the key concepts behind a topic that I'm studying is vital to make sure that I really remember everything that I need to for the test. Additionally, when doing longer questions where you have to explain a process or explain how something works, then you really need to understand that to get those full marks. So the way I try to understand things is firstly by using two different resources open. One of them with long form, such as a textbook, and another with a sort of note form, such as BioNinja, which is shown here, or with the class notes or teacher slides or any other resource that you may find. Here, I have the textbook open to the chapter which I'm studying. So the long form resource is used for studying chunks of text, which I really need to go in depth on and that I'm not really, and that I'm not totally familiar with. This will help me with really get coming to grips with exactly what these concepts and ideas are all about. Then the shorter note style resource will allow me to go faster over the parts that I really am familiar with so that I don't need to spend a lot of time taking in large chunks of text which I really completely know. But so the key thing that I focus on when going over the understand section is that I read with intention. What this means is that I don't just passively read the chapter and absentmindedly go through it flicking pages and sort of going, yeah, I know this, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't work like that. I actively try to visualize and explain to myself how things work so that I really understand them at a deep level. It's like when you're doing a physical exercise, you really need to focus on the muscle that you are working so that you get the maximum benefit out of it. Here it's the same. You need to focus on exactly what you're studying so that you get the most retention and the deepest understanding of it. Then, after I go through a piece of text, I ask myself, could I explain this to one of my friends? And oftentimes, I actually do turn to the wall, close my book, and try to explain it as if I was talking to someone. What this does is it makes sure that I can put my understanding into words because that's basically what you're doing into the exam. And if you can't turn what you've learned in the book into words, then you haven't really understood Understood it fully and I have to go back and reread and revisualize the different concepts. When going through a chapter I also like to have the syllabus by my side and take off the parts that I have gone through just so that I make sure that I've gone through everything that I really need to go through and that I'm not missing out any large chunks of information. So this section will typically take about an hour for a normal science topic however this can vary depending on the topic as well as depending on your familiarity with the topic. So the third section is memorize. So when I see people trying to memorize things, I often see them highlighting or rereading, and that is definitely not the best way to get the most out of your time. The evidence really shows this is not at all the most effective way of trying to memorize something, and that passively reading things really doesn't allow it to stick in your head. Instead, I prefer to use active recall-based learning, which massively boosts your memorization capabilities. So what is active recall and how does it work? Well, active recall is basically the process of testing yourself and doing short questions which cover the whole topic so that you are actively thinking about what you are studying rather than passively taking it in from a book. What this does is it strengthens the neural connections in your brain and makes sure that the maximum number of neurons are involved in forming a memory. This means that when it comes to time to actually remember that memory, you will have the most success when using active recall. So this has been tested extensively in the scientific community where active recall has far better performance both in long-term and short-term and in general is a 
far more effective tool of memorization. So the best way to do active recall, I believe, is to use flashcards. Now, many people don't like flashcards and sometimes think that they don't really work. But flashcards can be made in many different ways and doesn't just have to be question and answer. So one app that I like to use for flashcards is Anki because it allows you to do many different types of questions, such as image deletions or closed deletions, where you have a sentence and then you can cut out a section of a sentence. Anki is also incredibly useful because of the buttons it has, where if you don't know the answer to a question, you can press hard, and this will give you the question again in the next minute. If you do know the answer to a question, then you can press OK or good, and this will give you the question again in 10 minutes. Normally, I don't use the easy button since it sort of just throws the question away for three days and I don't really like using it that way. So after I do the understanding phase of my studying, I go onto Anki and I make a pack of questions, which normally takes me only about half an hour. Then I go through all of these questions and for any I don't know, I press one minute. For any I do know, I press 10 minutes. This way, I go through all of the questions at least twice. And for all of the questions which I'm unsure about or I don't know, then I get them more times, three, four, even five times, because I will keep pressing the one and it will keep coming back. This way, I can guarantee that I'm completely familiar and I know all of the questions for sure. I will be making a more in-depth guide to using Anki later on, since this isn't the ideal way to use it, and Anki is more of a space repetition platform. However, this is the way I use it for just studying for tests, and I feel it is effective to use it this way in this scenario. If you don't want to use Anki, then you can also use other types of flashcards or other types of active recall, where you can just write questions for yourself and answer them, or you can use Quizlet, where it's flashcards online, or you can even make physical flashcards. I actually did use this for organic chemistry since it was much more visual and I had to draw a lot of stuff, so that really helped. If these appeal to you, then you can do the same. So the third section is practice. Now you might be thinking, well, isn't this just the same as the section before? Well, no. The science of the two sections are the same and they both use active recall to really boost your memory and make sure that you have memorized everything by the time the test comes. However, with the practice phase, I use past paper questions which are topic specific, where I do as many questions as I can find on that topic in the time that I have. I will leave a link in the description below to where I get most of my past papers. However, often teachers do provide me with past paper questions before tests and sometimes I just use those instead. So when doing these questions, I make sure to always have the mark scheme by my side. And this isn't so that I can cheat and do questions looking at the mark scheme, but rather as I do questions, I am marking myself and I'm looking at what the mark scheme says about the questions. And I will look specifically at the keywords that the mark scheme uses and try to understand the rationale behind what the mark scheme is saying. So mark schemes can be very tricky and uh, there's no way of getting around it. You just have to learn the mark scheme and how it works. And if you understand this and you apply that rationale of how the mark scheme works to other questions and to the tests that you do in classes, then you're going to have so much success because teachers do use past paper questions and the mark schemes are the same. So understanding how the mark theme works, I feel is a really important part to the practice section. When doing these questions, just for the sake of time, I try to write out my answers in bullet points just to speed things up and also to get the main points out there and not have too much blabble. Also, when there are repeated questions, I tend to just skip over them, and any questions which I am 100% certain of and I really don't need to look at, I can also just skip over them. I try to aim for around 30 seconds on average per question. Now, this is ambitious, and in tests, they typically give around one minute per mark. However, I feel that by doing it 30 seconds per question, both in multiple choice and in long answer questions, you can really get things going and get your brain going really quickly so that when you do get to the test, you have absolutely no problems with time management. Bringing it down to 30 seconds per mark will really allow you to get through the maximum number of questions in the time that you have. So the next stage is of reflection. So the reflection comes after the practice where I reflect on the things I do know, but mostly on the things that I don't know or I am not 100% sure about. So by this stage, I'm already pretty comfortable with basically everything in the topic. This being said, there are parts which aren't at 100% and those are the parts which now I really need to focus on. So when doing the practice questions, I have a sheet of lined paper next to me where I put in bullet points to anything that I don't know in a question or anything that I come across which I'm not 100% sure about. Then, after writing a bullet point, I open up my book and remind myself of the answer to that bullet point 
whether it be the fourth stage of meiosis. I don't remember what the fourth stage is, so I go to my book and I remind myself of the stages of meiosis. Then I close my book and I actively try to think about different steps of meiosis and make sure that I can and make sure that it is back in my memory. Then I move on with the questions. After going through all of the questions, I typically have pretty much a full page of just bullet points filled in with stuff that I'm not 100% sure about. Then I will go through this sheet and actively try to think about or describe or answer the different queries I had put on the sheet. Then if I'm able to do so with a bullet point confidently, then I skip over it and put a tick next to it. If not, then I put a star next to it. And I again, look in the book and try to understand and actively think about what I am unsure about. Then I move on and I go through the whole list. Then I go back to the bullet point that have a star next to them. And again, I try to actively think about what these encompass. So the reflection process is normally pretty short, about 15 to 20 minutes. However, I believe that it is the most important part of the UMPR strategy. This is because it really singles out the parts which need attention and makes sure that there are absolutely no gaps in my understanding or in my knowledge or in my memory of the topic. Then come test day, then come test day, I take the little sheet with me while I'm having breakfast or in a lunch break or something and make sure that I know everything really, really well and that there are absolutely no gaps in my knowledge. What this does is a couple of things. Firstly, it obviously allows me to remind myself of the subject material before going into the test. But that's not the main thing. There are two more important things than that. It allows me to make sure that I know everything before the test. And if I don't know anything, then I can quickly go back and look at it so that when come the test, I will remember it. This ensures that I'm not left hanging in a test and I just don't know the answer to a question. Secondly, and maybe even more importantly, it gives me the confidence that I know everything there is to know about the topic. So that when I go into the test, I'm absolutely confident that I know everything and that I can get it top grades. Now, I believe that you can do the same thing too. If you use the same evidence-based techniques, such as understanding before you memorize, as well as using active recall to really boost your memorization skills and make sure that you know everything before a test. I do believe that this framework for studying for tests is absolutely incredible. However, I did come up with it, so I am biased. However, it probably isn't for everyone. And as many people say, the best revision technique is the one that best suits you. So this is the one that best suits me, but it might not suit you. So my advice for that, to that would be take these evidence-based learning tips that I have given you and adapt them to make them your own and create your own structured way of revising for every test so that it is completely homogenous across all tests and that you really have an established framework that you can use and ensure that you get the top marks that you possibly can in every test. So this is the Marcus patented UMPR technique and I came up with it organically. I sort of just started doing it one day and then while reading about it, I realized that I had automatically already been using these scientifically proven techniques to really further my learning. And this technique has really given me the best results I could ask for. To the extent that I've gotten a seven in every single chemistry and biology higher level test in the past two years of the IB. So I hope that this video has helped you and that you have been able to take something from it that will help you with your own studies technique and strategy. If you've gained any value from this video, then please consider dropping a like or subscribing since it really does help me out. So that's it for me and I'll see you next time. There's no stopping it now, there's no facing the heat. Can't nobody don't drop it now I'm down on my knees. There's no stopping it, stopping it. So hard to believe. Adrenaline's buzzing, I'm like a